All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, thank you for joining us today for the Gateway to Better Delivery webinar with Sencor and Zixi. Uh, my name is John Westgitz and I run the, the partnership and marketing groups at Zixi. Today I'm joined by Natron Dionarain, a senior sales engineer for partnerships, as well as Sencor product managers, uh, Aaron Dotton and Jason Gabbert. Today's agenda will be to give uh, a Zixi overview uh, gets an introduction to uh, Sencor, their technology uh, and their products, and how Zixi has been integrated with a live demonstration. And we'll take questions at the end, so please put them into the Q&A window, and we will as, uh, answer as many as we can. Uh, if we're unable to get to your questions, we do have them uh, logged against your email, uh, and so can respond to you directly. Uh, so before we dive in, uh, why is this partnership important? Uh, as IP workflows evolve, establishing private networks for transport can be expensive and difficult to implement. And the need for low latency broadcast quality delivery across vendors and platforms is quickly growing. Uh, customers must acquire, manage, and deliver content at scale globally, uh, on-prem, as well as increasingly from uh, re remote locations. Uh, all while ensuring maximum quality of service uh, and experience. So to address these challenges, uh, Sencor provides reliable, cost-effective signal transmission and content monitoring solutions for multiple markets. While the software-defined video platform is a complete offering that offers low latency, reliable transport delivery with the ability to use any protocol, any IP network, any cloud provider, and any edge device. So together we give broadcasters and content creators the ability to leverage IP to quickly and economically transport broadcast quality video signals at ultra low latency, as well as orchestrate, analyze, monitor, alert, and report on streams and devices with a dynamic control plane that provides visibility and direct access to the content supply chain. So who is Zixi? Uh, our software-defined video platform is used by broadcasters and content creators to source, manage, and distribute live and live linear channels over any IP network using any protocol, on-prem or with any cloud provider using any edge device. We therefore have the largest ecosystem for live video in the world with over uh, 100,000 global Zixi instances in over a hundred countries, uh, coming up on a hundred brand name customer, a thousand brand name customers all over the world, and over 200 technology partners enabling unmatched global connectivity anywhere to anywhere. So what are the components of the SDVP? There are four pieces. Uh, the first is the base Zixi protocol and other transport protocols that define performance define what the quality of service is going to be and how the viewers are going to experience it. High quality video means more viewers. Platform interoperability means not having to mandate the time and effort of a new SDK development. And then once all the endpoints are connected, signal path continuity. The second is the video solution stack coming from 13 years of innovation that allows for any configuration uh, complex deployments across any IP infrastructure, complex live transcoding and video editing, the management of metadata for ad insertion and closed captioning, and very importantly, being able to achieve and prove service level agreements. Next is the Zixi enabled network of hundreds of thousands of worldwide endpoints, hundreds of integrated devices like Sencor, uh, software platforms and service providers that have standardized on Zixi. This community allows for extreme ease of connectivity, speed of deployment, which can be measured in minutes rather than the historical times of, of weeks or longer, and the ability to start small and extend operations and services as necessary with agile infrastructure and adaptive incremental architecture. The last piece is Zen Master. Uh, a unique control plane across all of these connected devices, networks and environments that operators and engineers can access from anywhere in the world 
uh, enabling virtual operations, uh, which in the time of COVID is uh, even more important than ever, along with delivering deep audio and video analytics and the ability to manage uh, at maximum scale. So how does the SDVP enable these four components? Uh, to start with, uh, Zixi has the best protocol in the industry, utilizing advanced techniques such as dynamic forward error correction and ARQ that uh, deliver uh, bandwidth efficiencies to 40%, sub-second worldwide transport latencies, and stream bit rates up to five gigabits per second. However, we realize that there are other protocols being used for various reasons, so we also support 16 additional flavors uh, including the standard space risk, Dart TMP, HLS, uh, NDI for live production, uh, and importantly, uh, the ability to switch these protocols using the SDVP. Zixi's patented uh, hitless failover is an extension improvement of SIMT 202027 with an industry leading packet sequence alignment algorithm. This algorithm works much like a DNA sequence alignment reconstructing the sequence of IP packets that best recreates the original stream fragments, allowing for up to eight nines reliability, uh, depending on engineering architecture. We support multiple codecs with a never expanding list and this mantra that you'll keep hearing from us, any IP network, any protocol, and any cloud. Live quality transcoding is very difficult, but we do it at the highest quality, which improves customer adoption, satisfaction, and retention. We also support other features and functionality that broadcasters demand, such as recording, time-shifted delivery, auto-slating, and network transport and content quality analytics. So not only can you understand what is happening in your Zixi deployment, but also how it impacts your business. Zixi has spent a lot of time and effort developing relationships with our over 200 technology partners who have integrated the SDP into their devices, software platforms, and standardized on Zixi for their service offerings for extensive worldwide interoperability. Overseeing all of these components is Zixi Zen Master, which allows for the rapid provisioning, deployment, uh, orchestration, and monitoring of the end-to-end -end deployment at scale. It allows the management of third parties of the Zixi enabled network through their own user interfaces, uh, giving simplicity across co complex multi-party supply chains. The level of data available and centrally visible is unmatched from anything else that you'll see in the broadcast industry. So we're pretty pr proud of this. Uh, Zen Master provides alerting, history, uh, automation of repetitive events, scheduling, uh, detailed reporting, uh, and very importantly, root cause analysis of exactly when and where an error occurred in the deployment. You can tell if a packet was lost, did it hit an iframe and affect programming, or did it hit a SCSI mar marker and affect an ad and report that impact to, to management. This is a quick representative subset of our worldwide customer deployment. Uh, some of the biggest names uh, in the industry uh, all around the world. And here are a few of the partners in the Z Zixi ecosystem. Everything in the end-to-end -end broadcast workflow from integration into cameras, encoders, decoders, QA platforms, uh, forensic watermarking software, editing tools, and playout systems. This is a graphical representation of how all of these uh, elements look in a workflow view. On the left are a few of the examples of the encode options, uh, including Sencore, um, as well as the playout partners that we work with, uh, that giving you the ability to deliver video over the managed or unmanaged network of your choice. On the right, you can see the multi-CDN choices that can be made depending on what works best for you, to, depending on where you are in the world, as well as out to edge devices that include things like Samsung TVs, uh, the OTT providers who are our customers, and the variety of endpoint devices that can live in cable head ends and multiple service providers. The bottom uh, right is an interesting new area of live production and editing where live events are being cut, um, archived and distributed to a variety of social media options for mobile consumption. And over all of that is Zen Master for the easy uh, centralized configuration, deployment, and operations management of the deployments. 
So with that, I will send, turn it over to our friends uh, at Sencor. Aaron, Jason. All right, thanks a lot. We'll uh, go ahead and take over the presentation here. Everybody can see our screen? Yes. Excellent. All right, so uh, yeah, I mean, thanks everybody for joining. Um, just gonna give you kind of a brief overview of Sencor and kind of where we've come from and uh, where we are and where we're going. Um, I am Aaron Doughton, product manager for, uh, for Sencor. Been here for, for 10 years, been a product manager for about five. Um, got Jason Dabbert here, another product manager at Sencor. He's been here for, for 15 years, uh, product manager for well, probably about as long as I have, I think, maybe a little bit more than that. So um, some experience between us, um, just uh, developing products and things like that. So excited to talk to you guys uh, today about what we've got that uh, has Zixi integration. Um, but just to give you some Sencor background, uh, founded in 1951. Yes, we've been around for 65 years. Um, so quite a lot of experience in, uh, in the television and broadcast market. We actually started way back when um, just doing oscilloscopes and, and kind of uh, basic testing equipment and stuff like that for, for just electronic components. And of course, we've come quite a bit uh, further than, uh, than our roots. Um, you know, obviously getting a, a huge boost with the, uh, um, you know, HD and digital transition and things like that with our uh, MRD receiver decoder platforms. I think everybody is very familiar with uh, receiver decoders from Sencor. Um, but uh, over the years, we've also evolved our product line to, to do uh, encoding, transcoding, uh, you know, trans rating, um, you know, digital turnaround, uh, a lot of conversion type applications. And of course, we also continue our flagship uh, receiver decoder platforms as well. So um, lots of different applications that, uh, that we're getting into um, and in test and test and measurement as well um, with, our, with our video bridge, uh, video bridge platform. And of course, uh, we've got strategic partners all over the world, um, 50 plus um, and counting um, as we kind of expand our reach across the globe, um, just much like Zixi, where they've kind of got people everywhere and um, doing integrations with all kinds of customers around the world. Um, we do the same. And, uh, and of course, the partnership with Zixi is, uh, again, expanding kind of our, our reach into all different types of applications. Um, what we're going to talk about today, we're actually just going to highlight three of our products in our product portfolio. Um, all of them are uh, the three products that we're going to talk about are, are fairly new, actually. Um, one of them is uh, less than I would say about six months old, but uh, has really great momentum and a really nice new platform. Um, and then we also have two software based platforms, one of them being a receiver decoder, which, of course, again, everybody's always excited to hear about those from Sencor. And then also a uh, gateway platform that will highlight um, and all of which have um, Zixi protocol integration, um, Zen master certification, all of those, all of those things that, um, you know, help with the workflows integrating with Zixi. So I'll actually uh, hand it over to Jason to talk about our new SCP 2100. Yeah. So Aaron mentioned uh, a bunch of new uh, products from us, and this is one of the most recent ones here. This was launched, I think just a few months ago. Um, but the idea behind this one here, uh, the SCP-2100, it's a single channel encoder I have put up there, but really it does a lot more than that. Um, it does encoding, transcoding, basic gateway functionality, uh, PID filtering, service filtering, uh, all those types of things. But really the premise behind this product is it's an inexpensive, small, easily deployable solution to go acquire a signal and backhaul it uh, either to your head end or your cloud-based workflow. Um, really, it's a very flexible product for a number of different applications. The uh, really neat things about it are the, the breadth of inputs that you have on this product. So you can see we have terrestrial inputs, uh, whether that's ABSB or QAM. We have ASI, uh, we have MPEG over IP, and we also have our baseband inputs. So we have SDI and HDMI all as inputs there. So the idea here is that you can send this out to any remote location. Uh, any technician who's on site can basically plug in uh, whatever feed they're being handed and you can easily deploy the, the product then with any type of input there. So the, uh, the other thing you can do here is when you send this out, since it has Zixi Zen Master certification, um, you can easily pull this up inside of your Zen Master instance and log right into this unit and do all the configuration remotely. 
So it makes it very quick and easy to get this thing up and running. And then of course, uh, plug in an internet feed or a internet connection to it and send your Zixi uh, feed right back to your head end, to your cloud workflow or to your uh, uh, Zixi broadcaster instance in the cloud too. So very flexible product here, um, very quick to deploy, very small. Um, I'm really excited to see where customers find unique applications for this. All right, and then next up is our DMG 7000 uh, Internet Transport Gateway platform. So this is one of the newer uh, software-based platforms from Sencore that's really aimed at doing the um, reception, transmission, and conversion of all the different protocols that uh, uh, John highlighted. Um, obviously, Zixi is one of them, um, but there's other things like RIST, SRT, HLS, MPEG over IP with FEC, all of these different kinds of protocols are out there and, and need to be either aggregated or transmitted. And we just wanted to make a nice, um, I guess, protocol agnostic platform, um, not only to feed our own products, but also to feed um, other people's products. We try to be, like I said, as agnostic as possible in, a term, uh, in terms of being a, a platform for signal acquisition and things like that. But the beauty with the, uh, the, the Zixi integration, uh, just like Jason hi uh, highlighted earlier, is that Zen Master integration, um, just being able to reach out to a DMG 7000 platform, whether it's something that's in the field, maybe it's at the head end, uh, maybe it's in another cloud instance or something like that. It can all be accessed remotely from Zen Master. So if you have a DMG 7000, um, pretty much anywhere in the world it can be accessed, configured, managed, updated, all that great stuff, um, just like the SCP platform. Um, so really what this, uh, it's kind of a complementary product, I would say, to the SCP, where that's uh, more of a you know field acquisition type platform, and the DMG seven thousand would be, uh, I think, more aimed at your signal aggregator and being able to turn around all your different kinds of uh, you know internet transport based protocols back into MPEG over IP and then into your you know normal broadcast type workflows with MPEG over IP doing you know decoding or transcoding or uh, you know, making kind of a, um, you know, you know a, a service bouquet or something like that. And maybe, uh, I don't know, modulating the quorum, whatever. Um, just being able to get it back to um, normal kind of a broadcast MPEG over IP standard. And we can also do our cloud-based uh, implementations of our DMG 7000 as well um, in AWS and Google Cloud. Next up is our MRD 7000 software-based decoder. Um, so obviously Sencore has a very good reputation of building professional ASIC-based IRDs. Um, this is actually one of our newer platforms that is a um, software-based uh, receiver decoder that runs on COTS hardware, um, uses a variety of different kinds of input and output PCI Express cards. Um, and really what this platform has given us is a lot of flexibility that the ASIC-based decoders didn't have before. Um, one of the big things is being able to support uh, really super high bitrate contribution feeds, as well as things like Zixi, RIST, uh, SRT, and all those kinds of internet-based protocols that our ASIC pl platforms didn't have before. So what we gain is a very uh, a dense, very capable platform, um, you know, deployable in a one or U server or something like that, and being able to decode to, uh, you know, obviously your, your baseband SDI type formats, HDMI, and the, uh, the newer ST, SIMT2110, uncompressed over IP standard, um, you know, whether that's a, a 4K output or, or multiple HD outputs, this platform um, is able to, to do all of that. In addition to uh, doing some uh, just scrambling for all of those services, including the new standard, I should say, uh, new, uh, new protocol, BIS-CA, and of course, BIS-2 and uh, BIS-1. But uh, again, this is just a receiver decoder platform that has that Zixi integration so that we can uh, receive those signals um, from either cloud platforms or, or, or what have you and do a four channel decode in a one RU and output to any kind of variety of, of uncompressed formats for, for re-encode or, or monitoring and things like that. All right, so what Jason and I wanted to kind of depict was, you know, we, we talked about the products themselves as, you know, as, as individual products, but also to show off kind of how these things integrate not only with Zixi, but also complement each other in different types of workflows and different applications, um, kind of that we've, I guess, seen recently or the last year or two, um, as we've started to, you know, onboard Zixi and kind of get an experience with, you know, how are people utilizing, um, you know, the Zixi infrastructure to, to get transport streams and uh, content over the internet. Um, and one of those things is, um, you know, production live events um, using the SCP. And again, this is like, like Jason said, one of those, 
it's a signal acquisition platform, so you can take your uncompressed uh, SDI, HDMI feeds and things like that, do an actual encode, and then uh, put, that over, uh, put that over the cloud or, or over the internet with Zixie. And then on the other end, um, being able to receive those with the DMG 7000, turn those around to IP, or being able to do a decode um, and monitor or re-encode those with the MRD 7000. And then there with the DMG 7000 there on the left-hand side, just being able to acquire a, a great many number of uh, MPEG over IP streams, turn those around to, uh, to Zixi, uh, put it in their workflow if we need to, you know, obviously guarantee the reliability of that connection, we monitor those signals and things like that, and then receive them on the other hand, uh, on the other side with another DMG 7000 and turn those back around into uh, MPEG over IP. And then of course, local collection is a, Pretty big application actually for the SCP, being able to do uh, eight VSB reception. Um, so deploying these all over the US, um, receiving your RF signals, um, turning them over to Zixi, and then backhauling them across the internet to your head end um, to gather all of those you know, region specific eight VSB channels. Um, this is huge with all of the, the big satellite providers and things like that, being able to provide those local channels as a part of their channel bouquets. Um, this little guy has been a pretty huge uh, pretty huge product for uh, for that particular workflow. The other thing I wanted to bring up here is in the, as, as it relates to the SCP-2100 is a lot of the times, well, some of the idea behind the product is that a lot of the times there's um, unique sporting events or unique events or maybe low revenue generating channels that it just didn't make sense to deploy previously in your traditional workflows, whether that's a uh, least fiber line, uh, full on large scale encode multiplex all that stuff or satellite or satellite <laughs> yeah to deploy that um out of the edge to uh acquire a low revenue generating stream um i think nowadays it's more important than ever to have unique content as there's more and more uh streaming providers coming online it's becoming more and more important that you're able to differentiate your offerings from your competitors so if you're going if you're able to go out and acquire these unique events very inexpensively, and then use a technology like Zixi to transport those over the open internet back to your head end and add those to your channel lineup. I think it's, like I said, it's more important than ever to be able to do that very inexpensively. And the combination of the SCP and Zixi allows you to do that um, and allows those things to really make sense financially for you. Yep. Yeah, some units in the field, plus um, not having to build the infrastructure to get those things back to you know, wherever your head end is or, or your, you know, production workflows or whatever is, is pretty huge and not having to do that, maybe even it's a short term or, uh, you know, maybe not a permanent uh, channel that you want to, to even, uh, you know, onboard in your, in your channels and stuff like that. You can do this pretty almost on the cheap, I would say. Yeah. Uh, in order to acquire that unique content, like, like Jason was saying. So a few more use cases we wanted to highlight here. Um, the other thing that we kind of, we're thinking about when we're developing the SCP-2100 is a couple of these other applications where it maybe, may, maybe doesn't make sense to build your entire workflow a second time with what you're using for the primary workflow. Not to say that these workflows couldn't work as a primary workflow, and they absolutely do uh, day in and day out, and it's been proven over and over again. Um, but these are some of the things like we see customers, if they've never used these workflows before, um, this is kind of what we see them dipping their toes in the water and proving to themselves that these workflows actually do work and work very well. So the first one there is a redundant backhaul solution. So if you think of any application where you need to um, acquire a baseband feed, encode that, backhaul it back to your head end, uh, the SCP-2100 is going to be great for that. We can use Zixi, um, just plug in uh, normal cable modem, any sort of internet connection to the SCP-2100 and Zixi will traverse the internet there and make it make its way back to your head end there. And then in your head end, obviously you can use MRD-7000 to either monitor that feed or uh, bring it back down to baseband to re-encode, re-multiplex, et cetera, um, or DMT-7000 if you have a full IP-based workflow um, to turn that back over into MPEG over IP or any one of the other protocols. So maybe you just want to use that as a, a translator type of app appliance and turn that back into MPEG over IP or SRT or um, any number of the ones that are, that DMT 7000 supports there. 
The next one is a, a, a unique application that's come up here within the last couple of months. Um, actually, it was a customer application that they brought up to us, which is what I'm really interested to see um, kind of how, how all you guys come up with applications for the SCP 2100. But this one's specifically related to uh, the current state of things and uh, the COVID world. But um, in this application, the customer, all their NOC uh, monitoring uh, faculty are obviously not allowed in the building. So they're all working remotely. So in this application, what we're doing is deploying a number of SCP 2100s in their head end, all hooked up to their own SDI port on the uh, SDI router. And then the SCP 2100 is doing an encode, sending it across the internet. And then um, the customer or the NOC personnel are receiving this in their home and doing their monitoring remotely like that. And what this allows them to do is they each have their own SCP, they each have a VPN connection into the head end, and they can easily change the output of that SDI router, which is changing the input to the SCP 2100, and then quickly cycle through their normal channels, just like they were doing if they were sitting in front of their um, monitoring station in the NOC. So pretty unique application there and uh, a really cool one app, act, actually. So, and the last one here, as we've seen in the last few years, eSports has really been gaining momentum. Um, you even see it on primetime TV now, um, all kinds of different areas. But in this application, again, uh, based on kind of how things are right now or whether it's amateur sports leagues, et cetera, um, you can just take the HDMI out of anyone's computer run that into S SCP-2100, zig it across the internet, back to your head end. So we could take, so say if you're a, a big video game producer or something like that, you could take these SCP-2100s, mail them out to any of your professional players or even amateur players, high school tournaments, um, lots of different applications, and simply have them plug the, one of their uh, outputs of their video card into here and plug an internet connection to the SCP-2100 and you're off and running. So. Um, again, some pretty unique applications that have come out of uh, this SCP-2100 and the Zixi uh, technology. All right, and I think we will head over to our uh, web interfaces. We just wanted to give a quick run through um, of a couple of different products that we talked about. Um, one of them is the DMG-7000. Um, so I'll run through this part of the, the interface. It'll be a, just a quick GUI tour, just give you kind of a, a look and feel of, uh, of how these things are used. And then I'll hand it over to Jason to kind of give you a tour of the, the SCP-2100 as well. And then, uh, and then I'll hand it back over to John. But uh, without, uh, without any further delays, uh, this is the DMG-7000's web interface. Um, so here you can see I have uh, a couple different uh, gateways. Aaron, this is John. Let me break in. We're seeing you the, the key takeaway slide. Ah, let me fix that. Sorry about that, everybody. How's that? Perfect. All right. Sorry about that. All right. So here we have the DMG 7000 uh, web interface. Um, I just have three simple gateways configured here. Um, all of them using either Zixi receive or Zixi transmit with our broadcaster that we have in the SendCore lab. Um, so really, uh, it's, it's as easy as just configuring a, a basic gateway for uh, both receive and transmit. So in the general tab, we're able to give it an alias, you know, give it a friendly name so you actually know what's going on with this particular gateway. Then on the receive side, we've got uh, quite a few different protocols. Uh, of course, 6C is one of them, but we also have support for MPEG over IP with FEC, uh, SRT, HLS, and uh, also seamless RTP or your uh, SMPTE 2022-7 hitless switching. Um, so basic configuration of a receive is done here. And then on the transmit side, um, of course, we just configure um, all of those for those different protocols. Again, MPEG over IP, uh, SRT, and, and Zixi transmit is supported on the DMG 7000, but you can see the interface is pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, we, we keep all the same nomenclature that, uh, you know, the Zixi workflows would have. So customers don't get confused on, you know, what settings match up with what settings are in the broadcaster or, or whatever type of Zixi workflows would be there. And then of course, um, providing all the different types of uh, input and output, um, you know, metrics and statistics and stuff like that. You can uh, look at uptimes and round trip times, uh, maximum path bandwidth, uh, ARQ stuff. Obviously this is on our internal network, so it's almost cheating. Um, I'm not going over the internet. So it's a very, very clean, clean signal there with the Zixi transmit. Um, and then, uh, and then being able to receive from uh, one of actually Jason's SCPs in the lab here, we're going through again, 
our, um, our broadcaster in the lab just to kind of act as that, um, you know, the signal aggregator, the, uh, you know, the monitoring and analytics platform, and then, of course, the, uh, the Zen Master integration for uh, remote management and control. Um, and then to get into some other things here, the admin tab will give you uh, things like unit aliases, basic network configuration, your SSH tunnels for your Zen Master integration. Um, here we've got one uh, connected to uh, the, uh, the SendCore demo stuff uh, in, the, in the Zixi cloud right now. Uh, basic licensing, um, you know, SNMP communities and, and, and basic unit configuration. And of course, we've got the reporting tab as well um, for your alarms and logs. Obviously, I don't have any active alarms at the moment. But your logs are, are kept and are uh, not volatile either. So, uh, you know, if the unit is updated, rebooted, what have you, um, all of your logs are time stamped and, uh, and kept and can be downloaded if you want to be able to call those up uh, later. And then, of course, the About tab is just our, our basic software version, uh, UUIDs, um, licenses, contact information, and, and things like that. So, so that. It's kind of the DMG 7000 in a nutshell. Try to make it as straightforward and easy to use as possible, regardless of the protocol that you're receiving, converting, or, or transmitting. Um, so without any further ado, I will hand her over to Jason, and he can do a tour of the SCP. Yeah, so the first thing you'll notice here on the SCP-2100, and uh, you probably noticed on Aaron's as well, if you've used any Sencore products, is that all of our GUIs look very, very similar. So if you've used one Sencore product, um, it's very easy to jump into another one and know exactly what to do, how to set things up. So um, again, top-down workflow here. I'm going to ignore all the admin reporting tabs. All those are very, very similar. Um, but you can see again, so we start at the top, we pick an input. Um, you can see we have a number of different input um, options here, like I talked about previously, um, whether the baseband ones or compressed ones. So of course we support a, uh, input redundancy as well. So you can pick a primary and backup input. Um, you can dictate which, uh, how they automatically switch or if they manually switch, how they uh, automatically switch back, manually switch back, et cetera. So lots of options there. Um, then inside of the input settings, these are gonna look very similar to what you're used to seeing on setting any of these up. So, Multicast, unicast support, pick an interface, IGMP version three support, um, et cetera. Um, on the 8BSB side, obviously just pick your channel and then pick a couple of alarm thresholds. That's all these uh, bottom two settings do. Um, and again, all the uh, monitoring statistics here on the input side as well, on all of our inputs. And then uh, once we have our input set up, we Go, move to our processing section here. So again, we have our primary and backup inputs. We can configure primary and backup um, processing sections here as well. So you can dictate what you want to do differently based on the primary and backup inputs. So uh, for example, here, I can open these up, see what um, components are inside of each one of these services. So you can drag these across here. Um, I already had that one set up, but uh, service three, I want to do my encoding or transcoding in this case, I wanna transcode service three on my primary. If I switch to my backup, I actually wanna transcode. Um, let's, let's do something different so we can see something change. How about service five? You can see it automatically populates those there. Um, of course, we can edit our output PIDs, what we want for each of those. Um, on the video side here, we can pick all of our standard video encoding settings that you're used to seeing, profile level, bit rates, um, gap sizes, closed caption pass through, and then uh, some PSI settings here, whether that's a, the transport uh, rate, uh, service name, um, table structure, those types of things can all be configured there. And then we support two services of audio. Um, I say two services because a lot of people start talking about channels and stereo pairs and things like that, and uh, gets muddled very quickly, but basically two PIDs of audios is what we support here. So of course we can pass through audio or we can process it, um, MPEG audio, AC3 audio, and AAC audio. So you can pick what you want to do in each of those uh, cases there. And then finally onto the output, this is where we want to set up our internet transmission. So this one, of course, I've set up for Zixi. Uh, we do support SRT and MPEG over IP, but really the, the goal of this product is to use uh, internet transmission to easily uh, backhaul content over the internet. So. You'll see all of these settings here that uh, just like Aaron showed are 
uh, exactly the same in standard Zixi settings like you would see uh, inside of your broadcaster. So it makes it very easy to set up. And then of course, um, again, all the statistics come along with this as well. So you'll see it's very easy to set up, very easy to configure. And again, you can do all of this through Zen Master as well. So. Let's uh, head back to our deck here. And John, I will uh, hand it back to you. Okay, great. So um, I'm going to do two things here. The first is I'm going to launch a poll um, that would talk about um, uh, how you want to be uh, followed up with uh, after the, the presentation is over. Um, so please take a look at that. Um, we're going to do a few uh, takeaways and a, a few other things before we get to Q&A. Uh, so a, a reminder that if you have any questions, please do put them into the Q&A tab uh, and then we will take them. Um, but if, uh, Aaron, you want to go to the next slide, we'll get started with the, the key takeaways. So what are they? The, um, Sencore and Zixi are enabling the migration of legacy, uh, as well as the creation of new IP workflows across the media supply chain. With Sencore and the SDVP, users can transport content using any IP network, cloud, or service provider. You want to go back one? for a minute. There we go. Thank you. Uh, almost anywhere in the world. Uh, you can now very quickly set up a connection in a matter of minutes uh, with minimal staff involvement versus the extensive hours uh, and team effort needed uh, for more uh, legacy infrastructure like fiber or satellite. And lastly, uh, you can use Zixi Zen Master uh, Control Plane to access Sencore's products remotely uh, to manage and monitor the ingest and distribution of live streams at scale. Um, next slide, uh, we've got a couple of advertisements before we get to Q&A. Uh, &A. uh Sencor's fall virtual uh, event coming up. Uh, Aaron, you want to talk a little bit about those? Yeah, um, yeah, Sencor just has some uh, webinars coming up uh, as a part of our kind of fall update. Um, we've done some you know, Sencor product updates and things like that um, with a lot of our partners and stuff like that. Um, and of course, we're, if you want to reach out to us and, and get a more in-depth uh, deep dive into our product portfolio, please uh, don't hesitate to reach out. But we also have these uh, webinars that anybody can attend. Uh, can attend. Um, I'll be doing one on October 6th for BISCA. Uh, Jason will be doing one on the 7th uh, talking about inter -deli uh, internet delivery protocols. Of course, one of those will be Zixi. Um, and then October 8th, uh, one of our other product managers will be doing a deep dive into ATSC 3.0 and uh, some of the uh, things we've learned and workflows that uh, we found and, and, and products we're coming up with around that technology. And of course, uh, you know, you can go to our website, uh, www.sencore.com slash events to register for those. And of course, we'll be um, sending links on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Um, we'll do, be, you know, obviously uh, sending out email blasts so everybody will get that in their emails as well. Um, yeah, but just be uh, looking forward to those. We'll be uh, happy to uh, present and uh, have a discussion with all of you. And on the next slide, we've got uh, a few upcoming uh, webinars that Zixi will be doing uh, next week. Uh, our Eric Bolton will be presenting on the universal origination in uh, workflows with the SDVP. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we've got uh, a few uh, industry thought leaders coming together to talk about 5G and the future of broadcasting. And then uh, a week from today, uh, we'll be talking about monitoring and delivering over IP with tag video systems. So um, if that, uh, with those uh, things out of the way, let's go to uh, Q&A. Um, we've got uh, two questions that are, are sort of related. Um, and let's see who can answer this. Can you link to DMG 7000 point to point using Zixi without going through a broadcaster? And a related question, how do you buy each? So um, at, at this point, um, uh, although we're talking about uh, advanced commercial models, 
Uh, right now, uh, you buy Sencor from Sencor, and we'll give you the, the contact information for the Sencor sales team uh, here at the end, uh, as well as Zixi. Uh, point to point uh, is not yet commercially supported. Um, it wouldn't take uh, a lot of uh, engineering effort or commercial work. So if there is a requirement uh, for that, um, we can, uh, we can talk about that directly with you. Um, next question, uh, we'll ask uh, Natrum, uh, Natrum deodorant to, from the Zixi side to answer this. What are the pros and cons of using the DMG 7000 versus the Zixi broadcaster? Thanks, Jeff. <clears throat> um, the two, the, uh, the Zixi broadcaster is just software, whereas the DMG 7000 has hardware for inputs and outputs. Um, but the two, the, the two aren't necessarily comparable. They work together. So the DM, DMG 7000 will either receive content from a broadcaster or send to a broadcaster. Um, and the broadcaster is Zixi's uh, server level application that receives uh, content and, and then sends content out. The DM, DMG 7000 is able to encode uh, that content or decode that content and then uh, work with a broadcaster. So the, they're not necessarily comparable. They work together to uh, deliver uh, transport streams. Yeah, and right. uh, maybe I can uh, add on to that. This is Aaron with, with Sencor. Um, I think a really good, uh, I think a lot of the applications that we see with the DMG 7000 specifically, and then, um, and then the broadcaster is I would say and, and using the Zixi terminology, I would say the DMG 7000 is like a really extremely dense feeder or a Zixi receiver um, where we can, um, you know, do a bulk uh, conversion and transmission of Zixi streams into a broadcaster and then do a very, very dense reception um, out of the broadcaster where the broadcaster is still very much a part of, you know, Zixi's infrastructure to, to uh, you, you know, do the the point to multi-point, but also all of the monitoring and analytics and stuff like that that you get from from going through you know that that Zixi infrastructure and using ZenMaster and stuff like that, just gets you that much more flexibility as things go through the internet. Where of course we are kind of that that first mile, last mile, um, high density collection and transmission. So uh, anyway, that that's kind of what how I talk to our is with our customers, and I think that's pretty well received. So I figured I'd put it from the Sencore perspective too. Thanks, Aaron. So we'll, we'll follow up with a, a Sencor question. Um, I've been using Sencor's products for years, but how can I use Zixi in my cloud-based workflow? Yeah, so I think there's lots of applications there. Um, uh, starting again with the SCP 2100, whether you want to uh, ingest content into your cloud-based workflow, you can use the SCP 2100, do the encoding, and uh, use Zixi to go across the internet and ingest that natively, whether that's a DMG 7000 uh, running in a cloud instance, or it's um, with a Zixi broadcaster, um, lots of applications there. Again, you can use Zixi back out of your cloud-based workflow um, to do monitoring, run that into an MRD 7000, um, or run that back into a DMG 7000 at uh, a remote location or something. So. There's, there's lots of applications I feel like, and uh, the combination of the Sencor products and the Zixi protocol and technology really just opens up all of those um, for your creativity as well. Thank you, Jason. Um, back to Natrom. Uh, how does Zixi save bandwidth in a point-to-point -point link? Um, so Zixi protocol uh, natively will uh, save bandwidth by throwing out null packets. And uh, what do I mean by null packets? Basically, when you uh, encode a stream with constant bitrate uh, encoding, if uh, to meet the uh, bitrate, sometimes the encoder will put null packets into the stream when uh, there's not enough, uh, you know, data for it uh, for the encoder. So essentially. Uh, the null packets will be there to pad the stream to meet the, the constant bit rate. Um, and what the Zixi protocol does is it throws out those null packets and then it transports just the payload. And then at the end, wherever uh, that uh, Zixi stream is being unwrapped, we'll add the null packets in back to make that uh, stream um, a constant bit rate again. Um, so that's, that's typically how Zixi saves bandwidth uh, on streams. 
being delivered. We we typically don't use overhead or uh, FEC unless there's congestion on the network. Um, so our our uh, can, our FEC uh, algorithm is dynamic and it only um, starts up when there's congestion or issues on the network. Thank you, Natom. And last question uh, to the Sencore team. Do you have plans to implement Zigbee in the hardware-based products like MRD? Yeah, so I guess I could let the cat out of the bag on that one. Um, yes, we are actually are starting a project here late this year um, that will be a new I.O. module for the ASIC based platforms. Um, so this is both for the MRD and our uh, open gear uh, Atlas Gear uh, card based decoders as well. Um, so this module uh, will be able to integrate with Zixi, obviously do the, the Zen Master, the Zixi uh, receive um, for those ASIC based IRDs and then you know anything that you expect from a, uh, a Sencore uh, ASIC based IRD of course will still be there. So um, yeah, hopefully I think in Q1, maybe early Q2 next year we would have something. So obviously we'll be doing a big marketing blast around that. Um, probably hear some stuff from Zixi and Sencore on that topic. But uh, yeah, it's definitely something we've got in the mix. All right, that looks like it's the end of, uh, of our questions. So I'd like to thank uh, Aaron, uh, Jason, and uh, Natrom for, for joining us today, as well as all of our end, uh, attendees. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time out to hear more about uh, Sencore and Zixi. And we look forward to uh, talking with you again soon. Be well.